in the concept garden and we are in the process of figuring out exactly where we need to build our permanent raised beds in this square area. We've got our portable garden tables already placed, but like I said, those are portable. Now it's time to build permanent raised beds. For this, we're going to use a process called trilateration. And we worked with Dr. Lou Anella's Applied Landscape Planning class, and Tyler Trotman is a student that is in that class. Tyler, can you explain trilateration to us? Yeah, Casey. So for this class, we took trilateration and your design and plugged it into Computer Assisted Design Program which is AutoCAD for short, and a lot of professionals use this. So we identified two reference points that correspond with the actual garden. In our class, we chose the northwest corner as point A and the southwest corner as point B. Whenever you're stretching out your tape, you want to make sure that your path is free of obstacles. That way you get an accurate measurement. Then on the computer, we identified the distance from the corners of each of the garden beds we wanted to build to both reference points. This gave us two measurements for each point, one from point A and one from point B. We then take these measurements out in the field. So our first point, we identified the distance as 14.93 feet from our reference point A. And then we took a second measuring tape and measured the distance from point B, which was 24.14 feet. The point at which these two distances cross is the first point for our garden bed. Uh, so then we have eight points to identify the inside lines of our octagon. After we've located all the points in the garden, we can use a string to identify the straight lines connecting them to make our octagon. And then each of these lines will be what we build our raised beds off of. We can see that the octagon is centered in the square, so we know our beds will be centered also. So you may have noticed that we use tenths of feet instead of inches. That's because it's much easier to convert tenths of feet than it is to convert inches. So you really just want to make sure you don't get your measuring tape flipped over when you're doing your measurements. Because there's both on both sides. Yeah, there's one on each side. So you have tenths on one side and inches on the other. All right. Well, thank you for sharing this, no problem, Tyler. No Casey. Thanks for having me. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.